I find it really important to pay attention to what people are complimenting me on when I wear different makeup looks. So this, like I said, is a makeup look I always get complimented on. Hey guys, it's Molly here again, and as you can see from the title, I'm doing another makeup tutorial. I feel like I've been doing a lot of makeup videos lately, but you guys really request them, so obviously I want to do what you guys want to watch. Um, you really seem to enjoy my last makeup tutorial. I don't know. Maybe you just lied. I don't know, but I'm gonna take what you said in the comments and just roll with it. So a lot of you requested to see my like glowy makeup look because I mentioned that uh, in the video. So that's what I'm doing today. My kind of just like fresh faced, glowing kind of makeup look. So I've already washed my face, um, toned, moisturized, all that jazz. Uh, I've washed my hands because I do use my hands for a lot of my makeup and obviously you always want to have clean hands to prevent things like bacteria getting on your face and um, exacerbating breakouts and stuff. I have a bit of hormonal acne right now. Yay, love being a female. Um, so that's that and I obviously just don't want to get more bacteria on my face and irritate that even more. So clean hands, key. Uh, I'm going to start out with this Stila Beauty Balm. By the way, in every makeup video I ever do, I always have the products listed down below in the description box. So I might not know the exact like name or shade of all the products I'm using today, so it'll all be listed down below if there's anything you were curious about. Like I said, this is the Stila Beauty Balm, and it's an illuminating kind of base, I guess. So I'm going to squeeze some out on my hand. That's what it looks like on my hands. I don't know what color it is, but it's... It's a different texture to, I would say, most primers. It's a little, I would say, thicker. Um, but it just adds like a really dewy look to your skin. And obviously when I'm going for a really fresh faced, healthy skin, glowing look, that's like the best base to have, is a nice dewy look. And obviously, like for me personally, this isn't a look I always wanna go for, but this is the product I definitely use whenever I do want it. And this is always my go-to foundation when I want this look as well. This is the Rainforest of the Sea Foundation by Tarte. The bottle is so lovely, but I don't like having the dropper for an applicator. I just find it tricky to work with. I don't know if it's because I'm blind or just because I'm human. But for one of those two reasons, I'm not a huge fan. This is what it looks like, by the way. And you just drop the product. It's water-based. So again, it just adds that really glowing healthy look and every time I wear this foundation I get compliments like every single time I wear it my mom's like your skin looks great today like your foundation is beautiful your makeup looks awesome so and it's not just my mom but like it's just funny that every time I wear it she compliments me so she doesn't even know it but she loves this foundation and this would be a great foundation for any girls who have dry skin especially because like I said it is a water-based foundation so it's very thin very runny uh, which is why I like to work quickly with my hands when I do this foundation obviously I want to bring it under my chin a bit um, you can build up the coverage by adding you know another another pump from the dropper I don't like super heavy coverage I like my freckles to show through and for such a thin consistency foundation I've been told it is actually quite um, high coverage and like I said very buildable because it is such a thin consistency so the only problem I have found with this foundation at times is it can be hard to set because it is I want to say like a more tacky or wet consistency um, so keep that in mind it's just about finding something that works well with setting it so I have found something that I like to set it with which I will obviously show you in this tutorial um, now I'm just going to be concealing with my NARS Creamy Concealer some of my breakout, like I said, hormonal breakouts. Love it. So again, I'm just doing that with my finger because I've, again, been told that it helps blend better. But also, uh, I can feel where I'm applying the product because I can't obviously look in the mirror as a blind person. I need to be able to feel where I'm applying it. So that's always what I found best. I I do like this concealer. It's very hyped in the YouTubes. 
I find, I, I don't know that it's worth the hype. I mean, I have friends that this is like their diehard concealer. They love it. But for me, I find it's, the doe foot applicator doesn't pull out a lot of product. But I do like it for this kind of look where I'm going for that really uh, glowy kind of look. Now, I use a concealer that totally matches my skin tone. But if you're into that highlighting under the eyes, obviously, like, you just use a concealer that's lighter than your skin tone. I feel like that would add to the glowy kind of look, but I'm always just afraid I wouldn't be able to buff it out and blend it in properly, and I would rather not have very obvious white streaks under my eyes. So. Now this is what I'm using to set for the glowy look. This is a very glowy setting powder. Um, people use these in different ways. It's the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. You know, some people don't wouldn't use this to set, Others, like myself, use it to set. So I'm using this one to set. I don't know which one this is. I, I cannot remember. But it's, um, I'll list it down below, like I said. Um, <laughs> so I just use this fluffy, really fluffy Too Faced brush. I really like this brush. And because this is just a glowy um, powder on its own, it just adds to the glow we've already built with that water-based foundation and that illuminating balm that we put under it. I think it's really good to pay attention. I don't know, maybe as a sighted person it's not as important because you can see your own self, but for me as a blind person, I find it really important to pay attention to what people are complimenting me on when I wear different makeup looks. So this, like I said, is a makeup look I always get complimented on. And I, I started noticing last year that people always complimented me when I tended to wear more cool toned eyeshadows. So that's when I realized like cool toned eyeshadows obviously really work for me if people keep complimenting me. Um, so I think it's important to pay attention. Like what colors, and obviously like makeup isn't just about what other people think of you wearing it. It's about yourself and how you feel in it. But I can't necessarily always judge how I feel in it because I can't like look in the mirror to see it. Like I always know when I'm wearing like a vampy lip, I feel more confident whether it looks good on me or not. It just is one of those weird mental things. Deep purples and bright reds make me feel good. But I think it's good to pay attention because you don't necessarily, you're not even as a sighted girl looking in the mirror constantly 24 seven every day. So it's good to kind of pick up on those things when people are like, hey, that foundation looks awesome on you. If people keep saying that, that's a good foundation for you. You should keep wearing it. Anyways, rant aside, I'm gonna do blush now. On this, like with this look on the days when I'm wearing it, I don't highlight and I don't use bronzer. I know those are both very glowy things. Um, bronzer is just something I really don't wear very often. I love to embrace being pale. I think all skin tones are beautiful and I don't feel the need to like bronze mine up to feel pretty. Um, so I don't usually wear bronzer. I do sometimes, but not, not on this day. And because I've done such an all over glowing look, I don't feel the need to add extra highlight. But if bronzing, contouring, highlighting are things you're super into, again, obviously, like, you go do that, you know? You go by Coco. That's up to you. But this is the blush I always use. Now, this blush is, once again, one of those products, every time I wear it, people are like, what blush are you wearing? That blush is amazing. This blush I wore in my How and Why I Look at Things video I did last summer. Literally, sea of comments were like, what blush is that? What blush is that? This is the blush. It's by Stila. And I think what's great about this one is it's one of those products that um, I believe, I might be wrong, but I'm like fairly certain, it's one of those products that adapts to your own skin tone. So it'll look slightly different on everyone. And I think that's probably why people like it so much when I wear it, is it really looks good on me because it adapted to me, if you, if you understand what I'm saying. It's like those lip glosses. This is the coral one. I believe they also have it in a pink shade, um, but I'm using the coral one because I'm going for a peachy look today. I'm wearing a lot of um, kind of corally orange items. This is my favorite blush brush. I always feel so awkward when I'm doing blush on camera. The awkward smile. And like I always say, when I do makeup videos, I try to over blend and I'm always like touching my face when I'm doing my makeup because I want to feel like that it is set, that it's not tacky and that kind of thing. Um, so even though I can't feel my blush, I still, for some reason, 
feel this need to touch my face after. Um, all right, what am I moving on to? I am moving on to eyes. So I have my NARS base primer. So people always like can't understand how I do lipstick without looking or how I do all of these different things. But if you close your eyes or if you weren't looking in the mirror, you could touch your nose. We just know where our nose is. And if you were eating, you're not looking in the mirror when you eat, you just pick up your fork and bring it to your mouth and voila, it goes in your mouth. So it's one of those things where I don't think people realize that you don't actually need sight for as many things as, as you might think. So I'm using the Sweet Peach palette. This was a gift from a friend of mine. Um, she did not like it. Uh, I, I do like it. I don't love the scent per se, but I do like the actual shadows. So I don't know the names because I can't read them. I'm sorry. I don't know how to cover that mirror and show you which shades I'm using. So you can probably see the camera. Hey. Uh, so I'm using this shade right here. And for blind girls, I memorize my palette where different colors are or different colors that I really like um, based on kind of going through it with my mom or a friend. And then I count. So I know I'm using this shade uh, top, I guess if you're facing the palette, top left. Um, and then I'm going down to the third row down and I'm going into, that's going to be in my crease. And then I'm going to the middle row and I'm counting over one, two, three, four. And that's going to be on my lid. I like to use shadows that are kind of uh, luminous and glowy, of course, because that's the look I'm going for, but I don't like to go overboard. So I'm just highlighting from my arch of my eyebrow out, kind of feeling where my brow is underneath my finger. Then I'm gonna do the other eye. Some people do like one eye fully and then move on to the other eye. I'm one of those people who does each step on both eyes as I go. Uh, so now I'm doing my lid color. Like I said, I count over four. As you can see, I kind of go over my eye like a couple of times in each like each step that I'm doing. And again, it's just because I, I can't see how blended it is. I can't see if it's on every part of my eye. So I just kind of like to overdo things versus underdo them. I think that's key when you're doing makeup without being able to see in the mirror. So that's that. And I know this is like a very simple light eye look, but to me, when I'm doing this kind of glowy look, I want it to be natural. Like when I think of healthy glowing skin kind of makeup look, I think of it just being very simple. Um, I don't think of like bold eyes, bold lips. I like to just be like really neutral, really natural. Yeah, I think that these kind of eyeshadows are perfect to achieve that. I don't know, I'm not really, like I love glam makeup, but I'm not, I'm definitely not a glam makeup everyday kind of girl by any means. Although I do love a bold lip on a regular basis. Lips are where I go the most crazy, I would say. And just using that fluffy kind of blending brush and fluffing it back and forth in through my crease. All right, now it's time for liners. So I have two liners here with me. I have this one, which is, I don't know if you can see from the end of it. I've had this for quite some time. It's like a shimmery champagne shade, I believe. And I'm just going to throw this. I didn't bring a sharpener down. Good one, Molly. Luckily it's sharp enough. Um, I'm just throwing this into my waterline to kind of give it a pop underneath and brighten up that under eye area. I am not putting any liner underneath my eyes because as I've said repeatedly, to me, this is one of those looks that I just wanna be really natural. So just along my upper lash line, I'm taking a brown shade. And this is one of those eyeliners that, um, seems to really bring out the color of my eyes. I think because it's more of a red based brown, uh, it's not so much that chocolatey, it's like a red base. So it really makes my blue green eyes kind of pop a bit more, especially when I do bring it underneath the lower lash line, but we're just keeping it on the upper lash line today. Now I'm going to do 
my brows. This is something you've never seen me do in a makeup tutorial before. Um, I'm new to brows. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Definer in Dark Brown. If you watched my full face of makeup products that I've been scared to use or whatever I titled that video, um, that was my first time ever filling in my brows. And I've done it twice since then, only two times. The second time my mom did touch it up a bit, but the third time she didn't have to touch it up at all, which I'm really proud of myself for. So this is my fourth attempt. So I don't know how I'm gonna do because the first and second time Mama Bear had to step in and help out. Third time I did it on my own. We'll see what today has in store. It could go either way. I'm still very much learning how to do my brows and trying to figure out what techniques really work for me. So please don't judge me on my brow game. It's not, uh, it's certainly nowhere near perfected. It is in the beginner stages of blind girl filling in the brows. I believe in myself and I keep trying and that's what matters the most. Okay, I really wanna make sure I get the ends. So I'm just trying to feel like with my hand where I'm going. So I kind of use both fingers, like I use this finger kind of on my brow. I need to get my brows waxed, by the way. Don't judge me. I'm getting waxed soon. I feel like I'm giving you guys a really creepy look, but I'm just so focused on what I'm feeling under my finger. I apologize if I'm looking super creepy. Okay, so I'm just feeling it. It feels like there's still enough showing that it would be picking up on my brows. If you guys have any uh, blind girl brow tips, definitely let me know. Cause this is definitely a work in progress. But I'm excited to be doing my brows and like trying something new, you know? Because if you told me a year ago I would have been doing this, I would have been like, no, I am not willing to attempt my brows. But you know, trying new things and getting out of your comfort zone is what it's all about. So my mom, as you guys know, has to help me with my mascara, fixing it up. And I think just like my mascara, like some days I nail it and don't need any help and other days I look like a hot mess and need her to fix it up. So just like that, I think brows will be the same. I think some days I'm gonna nail it and other days I'm gonna be a hot mess and need her to fix it. And it'll just be a toss up. Who knows why these days happen. I'm actually gonna go on and do my lips and then I'm gonna finish off with mascara. So I'm going, I'm holding up my mascara, aren't I? The only reason I knew that, where is my lip gloss? Oh my goodness, where is my lip gloss? Found it. And the only reason I knew that is because when I held it like this to show you, I realized that the sweet peach one I'm using has like this rubbery thingy on the top. And so when I went like that, I could tell that it wasn't under my finger and I was like, nope, that's my mascara, which I just threw on the ground. Bye mascara. Um, so this is like a little mini 100 point perk of the, I believe it's Pure Peach from the Sweet Peach collection. And because I did the coral blush and the peachy shades on the eyes, I just think a nice light peach gloss is great. I love the texture of this. It's not sticky. It stays all day. So I'm just using the wand to really feel the edge of my lips. Mm, I love this texture. Even when you touch it with your finger, it's a very like slippery, I believe it's like an oil lip gloss, like those tinted oils, I don't know. Maybe I'm lying, but again, it'll be listed below. And I think when I, like I said, when I'm doing this really natural glowing look, just a nice simple lip that complements the eyes and cheeks is what I like to go for. So now I'm going to attempt to find my mascara. Be back in a second. Success. I have got the mascara. I don't know what mascara this is. It's just one of my minis from my mini sets. So that, you guys know I always love my minis. I'm just going to curl my lashes by feeling my lash in my curler. And now I feel like this is the most boring part of the tutorial, just watching me put on mascara because like we all know how to put mascara on, you know? I don't know, do you guys just want me to edit this part out in future makeup videos? Doing my lashes, because it's not that interesting. I do one to two coats depending on the day. Like if I want more boom lashes, I'll do two coats. Oh, and I feel I got it on my nose already. 
I'm going out tonight to a blogger event in downtown Toronto. So I'm gonna do two coats to make it a little bolder since the look is a little more simple. It's all about just feeling the lashes under your wand when you're doing mascara without a mirror. As you can see, I don't even really take my time. I'm not very careful with it. The days I am careful are the days I don't end up typically smudging my face. I don't know if you guys could see that because I'm not sure where the frame was, but I was just really struggling to try to get the wand back into the tube and I think I probably got mascara I don't know, like on the tip of my finger because I, I missed the tube multiple times there. Good one, Molly. Blind girl problems. I kind of almost blink into the wand sometimes. I find that nice and easy. Usually when I'm getting the wand back into the tube, and this is the same for lip gloss as well, I kind of try to hit the side of it with the tip of the wand. So I kind of almost like hit it like that so I can feel where it is and then slip it right in there. So I don't know how bad or good my mascara and brows are, so I'm gonna go have Mama Bear check it out for me and I'll be back to show you the end result. All right, so Mama Bear has fixed the mascara. She said my brows are good. I'm gonna have to trust her. You guys can let me know in the comments down below what you think. Um, but yeah, this is the end result of my go-to glowy makeup look. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know what your go-to products are for a glowing makeup look, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.